viewers welcome to my channel i'm hashim ali khan so far 14 uh, sorry 18 problems i have completed on capital gain so in this video from 19th problem i'm going to explain you so hope after completing 18 problems you got a lot of confidence in solving the problems on capital gain now before starting the 19th problem i expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which are given in the link under my description take the screenshot of the points then i'll explain all the points in detail Now, see the 19th one. <clears throat> Sri Sadhuram is holding the following assets in his business for the last 23 years. He sold all the assets during the previous year. Calculate capital gain and tax liability if his income from house property is 84,000. So, the SSC Sadhuram, he is holding some assets which are used in the business. So, Income Tax Act says, if an asset which is a depreciable asset used in the business and sold then the gain arising will always be short term capital gain irrespective of the period of holding always short term capital gain the here we have to calculate the capital gain income and also tax liability income from house property is 84000 particulars building machinery furniture land the four assets he has sold out of which building is a depreciable asset machinery is a depreciable asset furniture is a depreciable asset land is not a depreciable asset no depreciation is allowed on land according to the provisions of income tax act so gain arising on land will be a long term capital gain whereas the gain arising on building machinery and furniture are short term capital gain so separately we have to calculate then book value is given selling price is given selling expenses cost inflation index for all the assets in the year of purchase was 100 so first of all we calculate the short term capital gain on depreciable assets so here Sri Sadhura computation of short term capital gain on sale of depreciable assets for the assessment year 22 23 the depreciable assets are building, machinery, furniture. Land I have not taken. Separately, we calculate for LTCG for land. So, consideration received. This is the selling price given in the problem. The selling price 35 lakh, 10 lakh, 90,000, 30,000. From that, deduct the selling expenses, which is given as a percentage. That is 2% on building, 8% on machinery, 15% on furniture. So, calculate 2% of 35 lakh, 70,000, 8% of 10 lakh, 90. 87,200, 15% of 30,000, 4,500. Deduct, we'll get net consideration. From net consideration, deduct the book value. The book value of the assets are given in the problem. So deduct all the book values. We will get short-term capital gain or short-term capital loss. If we get negative figure, short-term capital loss. If positive, short-term capital gain. So we can see here, there is a short term capital gain on building. 11,15,000 is the short term capital gain on building. Whereas on machinery, there is a short term capital loss. 1,2200. Negative figure. Because 10,2800 minus 11,5000. 1,2200 loss. Negative. Furniture, 3500. Positive short term capital gain. Now, short term capital gain on building is 11,15,000. Short term capital gain on furniture 3500. Total short term capital gain 11,18,500. From the total short term capital gain, we can set off short term capital loss. The short term capital loss is 1,2200. Deduct. So ultimately, the net short term capital gain is 10,16,300. Now we calculate long term capital gain on sale of land because land is a non depreciable asset. So consideration received sale price of land 8,51,000 selling expense 1% deduct 1% net consideration 842,49. From that indexed cost of acquisition. Remember indexing will not be done for short term. 
it is only done for long term so the purchase price was 120000 into 317 that is the current previous year index the index number for 21 22 317 divided by 100 will get 380400 direct long term capital gain is 462090 so we have computed the short term capital gain and long term capital gain so here income from house property is given in the problem 84000 short term capital gain is taxed along with the other incomes as per the slab system so short term capital gain 116300 the normal income will become 11300 this is the normal income on which slab system will apply the first slab up to 250000 the income is 250000 rate of tax nil amount is nil second slab goes from 250000 to 5 lakh rupees 250000 to 5 lakh 250000 is the income 5% 12500 the next slab goes from 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh here the income is 11 lakh 300 it is more than 10 lakh so here 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh the income is 5 lakh the rate of tax is 20 percent so 20 percent of 5 lakh 1 lakh now the balance over 10 lakh rupees whatever be the income 30 percent is the rate of tax so total income is 11 lakh 300 minus first three slabs 10 lakh 2 lakh 50 thousand plus 2 lakh 50 thousand plus 5 lakh so 10 lakh you subtract the so remaining 1 lakh 300 on this 30 percent is the tax 30,090 the so total tax on normal income is 1 lakh 42,500 this is the tax on normal income to this we add the tax on LTCG LTCG is 462,090 20 percent is the flat rate of tax the so tax on LTCG 20 percent of 462,90 92,418 add up add health and education says 4 percent 9400 so tax liability comes to 244408 rounded off to the nearest 10 the last 8 rupees can be made as 10 rupees so 244410 that is the tax liability so this is the end of problem number 19 now i am going to read out problem number 20 mr murthy sold a residential house in mumbai for 36 lakh so sale consideration received 36 lakh the cost of acquisition 16 years ago was 8 lakh cost inflation index 100 it's a long term capital asset because the SSC hold the property for more than two years the holding period is two years deciding factor if sold within two years then short term more than two years if he held then long term so it's a long term capital asset after three months he purchased a flat for rupees 38,50,000 selling expenses 1.5% calculated income from capital gain the first time we are coming across a new point the SSC can get exemption under section 54 write down the provisions when you watch the lecture always keep on hand a notebook calculator pen because so many provisions I am explaining every in every video so we cannot remember if you just listen note it down the so first time we are coming across exemption under section 54 will be given when the exemption 54 will be given if an SSC sold a residential house and purchased another residential house within the stipulated period the stipulated period is given in the income tax act so if one residential house is sold and another residential house is purchased then exemption under section 54 will be allowed in this case our SSC Mr. Murthy he sold a residential house and within two months he purchased another residential house so he is eligible for exemption under section 54 now see carefully Mr. Murthy consideration received 36 lakh that is given in the problem he sold the house property for 36 lakh and selling expense are 1.5 percent given so 1.5 percent of 36 lakh 54 thousand net consideration 35 lakh 46 thousand from this we deduct the indexed cost of acquisition he purchased the property for 8 lakh 16 years ago 
सो करंट प्रीवियस इयर इंडेक्स नंबर इज थ्री सेवेंटी एंड द इंडेक्स नंबर ऑफ द परचेज इयर इज गिवन इन द प्रॉब्लम हंड्रेड तो थ्री सेवेंटीन डिवाइडेड बाई हंड्रेड विल गेट ट्वेंटी फाइव लैख थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड डिडक्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव लैख थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड टेन लैख टेन थाउजेंड इज द कैपिटल गेन नाउ फ्रॉम कैपिटल गेन वी विल डिडक्ट द एक्सेम्शन अंडर सेक्शन फिफ्टी फोर so here less exemption under section 54 10 lakh 10000 direct 10 lakh 10000 long term capital gain is nil now the question arises how we got 10 lakh 10000 exemption under section 54 so here exemption under section 54 the ssc has transferred residential house and purchased house for residential purpose hence exemption can be given condition is one residential house should be sold and within the stipulated period another residential house should be purchased then exemption under section 54 will be allowed this working note you must write in examination if you directly compute the value without writing working notes you will not get the full marks so always give more focus on working note also the exemption is list of the following to cost of the new house 38 lakh 50000 given in the problem and second one is capital gain amount what is the capital gain amount 10 lakh 10000 whichever is lower actual cost of the new house or capital gain amount whichever is lower so here lower amount is 10 lakh 10000 that is the exemption under section 54 so here exemption so long term capital gain is nil so every problem i told you we are coming across one or two new points so focus on those New points. <clears throat> Now, next problem, twenty-first. Srimati Jyoti, age forty-two years. That means non-senior citizen, below sixty years. Uh, owned a residential hotel house at Haridwar City. It acquired by her on sixth July. Then sixth uh, July, two thousand four, for rupees twelve lakh forty-three thousand CII. Cost inflation index one thirteen. On third December twenty twenty one, she entered into a contract to sell the house to Mr. Pradeep for forty lakh and received one lakh fifty thousand as advance. So before the due date of the agreement to buy, Pradeep expressed his unwillingness to purchase, and rupees ninety thousand advance money was forfeited. Regarding advance money forfeited, already in so many problems we have discussed, the law, the income tax law says. If the advance money is forfeited before one for two thousand fourteen, then advance money will be deducted from the cost of acquisition. If advance money is forfeited after one for two thousand fourteen, then this advance money forfeited is taxable under income from other sources. So here also it was, uh, I mean, uh, it was forfeited after one for two thousand fourteen. So this ninety thousand is taxable. under income from other sources then on 2nd march 2022 srimati jyoti sold the same house to mr varman for 60 lakh and the state government valuation is 72 lakhs at the time of selling the state government valuation is 72 lakh but he sold the house for 60 lakh so income tax act says if the state government valuation is more than the consideration received so state government valuation that will be the value of full consideration so in our problem the value of full consideration is 72 lakh because 72 lakh is more than the consideration received is 60 lakh right and on 15th march 2022 she purchased a residential house in chennai For rupees thirty eight lakhs and deposited twelve lakh in State Bank of India under capital gain account scheme to construct one more floor in the new house. Compute tax liability if income made from other heads is nil. If it don't have income under other heads, only this capital gain. So how much is the tax liability? Again, in this case, the SSC sold one house property. and within the stipulated period purchased another house property and deposited some amount in a bank in capital gain account scheme then he is eligible or she is eligible for exemption under section 
54. So two more new points we are covering, we are, I mean, facing in this problem. Srimati Jyoti, full value of consideration 72 lakh. Just now I told you. Actually, sale price is 60 lakh, but the state government valuation is 72 lakh. So 72 lakh is the full value of consideration. Selling expenses are not given. Then net consideration 72 lakh. Indexed cost of acquisition. The actual cost of acquisition was 12 lakh 43 thousand given in the problem. First, second line 12 lakh 43 thousand. CII 113. So 12 lakh 43 thousand into 317 by 113. 34 lakh 87 thousand is the indexed cost of acquisition. Direct indexed cost will get capital gain. 37 lakh 13,000. This is the capital gain. From capital gain, exemption will be allowed under section 54 because the SSC sold one residential house and within the stipulated period purchased another residential house and also deposited in a bank. In capital gain account scheme for construction of one more floor in the house, that will also be eligible for exemption so we are getting the exemption 37 lakh 13 thousand long term capital gain we are going to get nil so how we got exemption i'll explain transferred asset is residential house and a house is purchased for residential purpose so exemption can be given in addition to this amount deposited in a bank under capital gain account scheme is also eligible that is the new point not only purchasing the house but also if the SSC deposited an amount in a bank under capital gain account scheme, that will also be eligible. So in the present problem, 38 lakh is the purchase price of the new house and 12 lakh rupees he has deposited in a bank. So 38 plus 12, 50 lakh he is eligible. So for exemption, that is 38 lakh plus 15 lakh. 15 lakh or 12 lakh, it's 12 lakh I think. Yes, 12 lakh. Uh, 38 lakh plus 12 lakh that comes to 50 lakh so exemption will be least of the following two amounts eligible amount is 50 lakh whereas capital gain amount is 37 lakh 13 thousand whichever is least the least is 37 lakh 13 thousand so exemption under section 54 is 37 lakh 13 thousand so capital gain nil. now in this problem the SSC does not have any other income so his long term capital gain is nil Whereas income from other source only one income is there that is advance for money forfeited. The advance money forfeited 90,000 that is taxable under income from other sources. So if you find out the total, his total income is below 250,000. The basic exemption limit is 250,000. He is having the income only 90,000 advance money forfeited. So since his total income is below the basic exemption limit, so his tax liability is nil. And not writing all these points here because space will not be there and time will be lost. So I'm expecting that you are maintaining the accounts. So write down all the points. Whatever I'm explaining, keep a note. And in examination, you must have to write the working notes. So we have completed 21 problems so far. 21 problems I have explained on capital gain. Every problem you have seen, some new points. So after watching all the videos, definitely I expect you got a lot of confidence in writing the problem on capital gain in examination. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and buy the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.